Hello, my lovelies. I'm Jenny O, oh, the author with no last name. And today, I'm continuing to talk about Star Stable Online and how not to make an MMO. It's important to note here that I'm not only an author, I'm a sometime peer reviewer, a development editor, a fashion designer, and a game dev who has lived in San Francisco. And for one reason or another, all of these are important, so bear with me. I want to put this first. There will be spoilers ahead for Star Stable Online and the original Starshine Legacy games. None of what is happening is the dev team's fault. Please, do not harass the dev team. None of what is happening is the ambassador's fault. They are PR volunteers and aren't paid. Please, do not harass the ambassadors. And when I say this player base of Star Stable Online are children, I mean most of the players are under the age of consent. And from where I sit on the other side of 30, they're children. Children with YouTube channels and big Instagram accounts doing great things. And still children. It's factual, not derogatory. Much of this information is alleged, unconfirmed, and yet paints a very compelling picture as most of it reinforces each other. For those of you who do not know, Star Stable Online is an online massive multiplayer game that touts itself as a continuing adventure with your friends. In Star Stable, you can ride horses, do quests, and well, that's about it. Over the last five years, with the last three becoming more and more vocal, the player base has noticed a disturbing trend with Star Stable Online. They are pushing monetization of horses and everything else, including an appearance changer and starter horse appearance changer, over the actual content of the game. All the frustrations and ideas that the player base have been condescendingly acknowledged or outright ignored as higher management seeks to appease investors and stockholders. In late March, early April 2021, in a private Facebook group, someone shares with the group screenshots of the employee reviews of Star Stable from Glassdoor. This comes to the attention of Isa of Star Stable Updates, a popular SSO YouTuber. She makes a video reading these employee reviews and reacting and it exploded across all social media platforms from Tumblr to Instagram to Reddit and I'm going to suppose Twitter from, from there. Multiple YouTube videos about what was going on, multiple reactions, hundreds of comments on YouTube, and probably Instagram. Ex-employees and current employees coming out of the woodwork to either confirm the reviews or defend SSO depending. Now, what is Glassdoor, and what has everyone in an uproar? Glassdoor is an anonymous employee review site of companies. They have a reputation of being fairly accurate, especially in the long-term gaming community who have seen several companies explode, implode, after information surfaced on Glassdoor about their company policies and what it was like working behind the scenes. Obviously, people who are happy with their job are less likely to post on Glassdoor. Here is the thing. You sign in with an email or your Facebook account, and Glassdoor can book about with their algorithms to find out if you are actually who you say you are. It's kind of like Amazon using Facebook to know that your parents and friends are leaving you reviews on your indie published book, and it's against the rules, so they take those reviews down. So they can check your Facebook and your LinkedIn profile and see if you really were an employee of that company if you ever mention it on your socials. Well, unless you're me. I didn't make my socials until I started marketing my books, so there. The issues begin when if you have multiple negative reviews. Do those reviews have variation of language? Are they posted over a period of time and essentially back each other up? If the answer to those questions are yes, then it is much more likely those reviews are accurate. Star Stable had 10 reviews over a series of several years, and all the reviews said the same thing in different terms. Their rating was 2.9. 
By the end of the month, it had 13 reviews and a rating of 2.6. Let me again summarize. The game engine is still the same engine from 2009 and needs to be rebuilt. The game is riddled with bugs and glitches due to shortcut programming techniques called tech debt that is the worst in the industry, along with their tools. Higher management knows and doesn't care about the bugs or making the game better. They care about making money, aka pumping out horses to muck the player base rails. Along with the typical gaming industry problems of overwork and underpay aggravated by their weekly release schedule. There is no way to advance your career. There is no learning of any new programs or skills to take to another company. Star Stable is a career dead end. Unless you like making digital horses. As Josh Stripe Hayes put it, the CEOs of short-term monetized games don't know what makes games fun or good or sustainable. And I'd like to add what is worse, they don't care. If Star Stable had been like any other game with a dedicated player base of hardcore MMORPGers who love the game industry so much they are intimately familiar with how their MMOs are made and industry practices, this might not have been a proverbial bomb. Again, most of Star Stable's player race are children and teenagers, many of which Star Stable has inspired to create and work on games. Many wanted to work for Star Stable. They view Star Stable as inspiration. They aren't completely aware of the industry's urgent need to unionize and how underpaid the workers making their favorite games really are. This was like ripping off of a band-aid. Star Stable had said they'd listened. Star Stable had said they cared about their employees and their players. Star Stable was supposed to be different. Long-term players reacted with anger, frustration, and a fair touch of cynicism. While newer players, desperate that their favorite horse game wasn't really that bad, clung and protested to the hope that maybe if we give them time. And the ever-popular defense trotted out by the team and by the players is, they have two teams, one for horses and one for everything else. It takes a lot of time to create quests and come up with new character art and map expansions. Well, yeah, if your game engine hasn't been upgraded really for 12 years. Look, allegedly according to devs who have left and those that are still there, they cannot even see changes they make in the game in real time while they are building in the engine. They have to save their work, close over out of what they're doing, and load the game. This is, oh, back in 2006 when you're trying to use a Microsoft programs on an Apple and you had an Apple font program and a Microsoft word processor. You had to shut the word processor and restart it for it to recognize the fonts you opened with the Apple program. It's 2021. This is insane. Surely, with a $17 million profit back in 2017, they could have invested in either recoding their open source engine, or building a new one, or even transferring everything to Unreal 3 or 4. Hey, they had an $18 million investment in like 2018. Where did that go? And in 2019, they made $26 million in profit. According to my estimation, if they were paying their employees on the low end back in 2011, aka about 30 grand a year, the original game took less than $2 million to make because they already had all the assets. So given they have mostly already reskinned all the assets and are still not paying their employees enough, and if we do the math of what we know they make in profit and what they could have made in 2018 on an average and the investment, 17 plus 26 divided by 2 equals 21.5, so 17 plus 26 plus 21.5 plus 18 equals 82.5 million. The known budget for the first iteration of Final Fantasy XIV was 120 million. The also known budget of Ashes of Creation is 35 million and that's coming out next year. So they can make themselves a very pretty and mechanics heavy video game with their profits and investments. There is no excuse for what we have. 
Then there is the alleged 72 million net worth. So someone out there is saying Star Stable, with the tech tools that are the worst in the industry, and they can't keep employees because of them, is worth 72 million if they were to try and sell the company. Because of a bug ridden game, the industry leaders laughed at in 2009 when they went looking for investors. Oh, and they made a map, but about 20 minutes worth of quests in two to four months? I cry bullshit. Someone is buying themselves a very nice yacht. But let's look at this two teams theory. Stacy Place is a YouTuber who started a live stream, Let's Play of Star Stable, in January 2015. Six months later, Star Stable has her doing Star Stable with Stacy on their official channel. She became an official employee. She started an entirely new series for this. So there are 201 videos on the official Let's Play and 231 or more on her own channel. There is literally no meta for this game. There is no need for builds or grouping styles. This is purely masturbatory bringing content and viewers to their channel to up the algorithms type of content. I don't know, is it hang out with Stacy time? Is the game so complicated they need her to explain it? I mean, they don't have a very good explanation of many mechanics in the game, including reputation. So maybe they should have invested in putting in proper tutorials in the game instead? Stacy hosted their so far one and only live event in 2018 when they showed off their new character designs for the Soul Riders, something they'd been teasing since 2016. It should not take two years to redesign for characters. Stacy, I guess, enjoys talking about what's going on behind the scenes to people. And this has made it to Reddit. Allegedly, there aren't really two dedicated teams. There are rotating teams. You finish a project, and you're assigned to the next one. So maybe you do a horse, and then you get assigned to some tech recolor or something, and you might do a race, or it's hard to say because the updates lately have not been stellar. Not even pets are getting regular updates. So, because they have a revolving door of freelancers and employees, if you are assigned to a project and you want to go when you're finished with said project, you can leave without hurting the progress of the game overall. So every game dev with mechanics and game making software experience in the company eventually has had their fingers in every different type of project from texturing to building races to making animations. This is a problem. This is a major problem. Animations aren't standardized by this method, texture maps aren't standardized by this method, and if an employee quits and they were coding a major part of a project, that means the code is probably junk, they have to start over, setting back game progress. So for a game that decided on a new art style in 2017, nothing still has a standard, and if the employee leaves, they can't come back and fix janky animations or plastic textures. I don't know any other company that works like this at all. This isn't even efficient. Rumors are the employees are so revolving door, there are no seniors to train the new hires and procedures and programs. Programs like a game engine from 2009 that was open source and probably no longer has a manual? I can feel my stress levels rising already. Then to complicate matters, apparently Friday is do what you want day. So game devs work on game mechanics and game assets and things they think would make the game better and maybe if they stick around long enough, they'll actually get finished and be implemented into the game. Known alleged Friday projects. The first Moreland revamp. Unfinished projects include player housing, the nail salon, and try a horse feature. The main character hasn't had a graphics update since November 2017, and that was mostly proportions. It didn't really change the face or the hair or the overall UV map. Since many NPCs have gotten glow ups, and the player character looks increasingly out of date and out of place. There is no male character due to, due to story reasons, and honestly, given some of the other comments, I think no one knows how to work the current character module to make a male player character even if they could. 
So they are having to update this player character module with the emotes and animations from scratch. They don't even have a transparent roadmap at this point to when this character update is going to happen. Game devs have been talking about it for about a year or more informally. Official news randomly will say, oh, we're working on the player character, really? And if the really talented people they have left are going to do it, it means they have to be pulled off the horse team to do so, thus taking away from the quality of their current cash cow. Er, horse. I wouldn't expect it to 2022, that's just how this game works. Maybe we'll get a live event! Players have asked for things like blankets and lead ropes and ear bonnets. Instead of being honest and saying, our technology can't do it, they tell the players, we hear you, it might be put into the game, but we can't say. Which makes the players feel unheard, and given this is 2021, obviously some of these things should be possible if only they had up-to-date game engine technology. Revolving teams and casual Fridays combined with the out-of-date technology and a list of bugs probably taller than I am, and upper management who is intent on milking the most money out of this game as they start a new one. Forget alarm bars, we are at blaring sirens. This game is not a continuing adventure as advertised. Their advertising is basically fraudulent. This game is a horse collection game with a single player story and far too many cross country races lapped onto it. Aimed at children. Whom they've convinced the money they spend on premium currency is going to fund the game to make it better. Children who think if they just hold onto their hopes and dreams, higher management will listen to them and their favorite game won't die. And higher management responded with a fact that was really hard to get on their shitty on the back end website, and so most people aren't even going to see it because they didn't put a link in the news so it won't show up in the game launcher. Their response was the exact same type of language they have been using since way before 2018 when I got fed up, took down my four part good review, and replaced it with my very critical review of the game on my website. Their language is passive aggressive, invalidating of all the player's feelings, it's not their fault, it's our fault. They don't have a problem, we do. We are children, they are adults. Respect our authority as we don't respect your humanity. If the employees aren't happy at Star Stable, it's the employees' fault, not the management's. And basically, the actual written content when looked at with any type of logic whatsoever, given what they've actually done versus what they've said, full of lies. Yes, they have engaged in gaslighting of children. Children and teenagers who are going to believe them because they don't know any better, or they do know better, and are hoping Star Stable will be different just this once. Despite the fact they have shown us over and over again who they are and we need to believe them. I'm waiting for the trickle twisting here, and the, okay, I did it, but it's not that bad, and you're making too big of a deal of it, it's your problem again. They also released a one month roadmap. It opened with Grind that really highlighted the slave wages our player character works for in this game. She goes around picking up garbage for literally 10 cents in game value per can. Players finish this in 24 hours or less. They are that bored. Then they were adding yet another cross country race for lower level players and for in order for them to grind reputation faster. We have to be at over 30 races in this very small map. Last update was more horses, a remodel of the Arabian horse, the third iteration of the Arabian in the game. Then after that is finally some story quest to wake up Fripp, who has been knocked out in a coma since at least 2018. And after that is more grind. I am not sanguine. I don't care if you have a passion week, according to your LinkedIn at the company. I don't care what your fact says. I think employee surveys are absolute rubbish and terrible our HR policy. I don't believe your PR. I believe your employees, current and prior. Yes, because there are current employees behind the scenes as quietly as they can going, Glassdoor is true, so they don't lose their jobs. When two, 
very popular with the player base, employees who were the public face of the company end up leaving, aka quitting for greener pastures, and one admitted to feeling overwhelmed to the player base, and we find out you don't really care about their mental health at all? I will personally believe Glassdoor. I care that your team is working reasonable hours for good pay, and you are giving them the updated and realistic tools they need and require to make a game that has a fun and multi-level experience geared towards MMO game players types in 2021, as you claim you are doing. And SSO doesn't, and SSO isn't. And they aren't even catering to their PvP racers anymore. It is insane. Maya doesn't count. Maya is a very difficult to use program. I don't know why you're using it. But okay, if you know what you're doing, you can make some very pretty horses. I'm talking about the engine. A 12 year old engine is not even neglect at this point. It's abuse. It is amazing it works. I can't imagine the time these employees are wasting having to learn to use it versus what they've learned at other companies at school. I have worked with old shitty software. It is not fun. It, it's slow. It's never well documented. It can be redundant. I had to write my own manual on how to do my job because of the bad software. And if you leave a place, you can't even say you know how to use it because nobody knows what it is. It completely does a disservice to your current employees and your ex-employees to continue to knowingly use outdated game engine technology in the current game development climate. At the moment, in the game, SSO is a horse collection game with some sandbox mechanics relying on the players to come up with their own stories to make the content fun. Oh, and grind. Lots of grind. I paid a lifetime game account for something that should have a beginning, middle, and an end of the story. We have a beginning. We don't even have one-fifth of the promised map teased back in 2019. A full map that is incredibly difficult to find because they aren't even putting full maps into their books, so I don't even know how big or how official this map is. A map, by the way, if it is proportioned the way it is, would take the horse maybe 20 minutes to run across it from coast to coast. It currently takes seven minutes to run across the open map east to west. That is how small this map is, and it is zoned into nine parts. The amount of funneling in this game is outrageous. It's frustrating to play this game because the zones are so small, and yet all of them are dead. Daily quests, races, and grind do not count as something to do, aka content. And you can't even run across this game in a straight shot from east to west as a human. Or back, because there are hills in this game your character cannot climb, they are so steep. I'm talking San Francisco, they put in stairs, steep hills, where the horses would fall over in their traces dead after a day of cabby work. I had to find a 10 minute workaround to run as a human across the map from east to west. There was probably, probably no way back west to east. I called for a pickup. Running as a human did take 20 minutes. As a human. In reality, because this is a mount system oriented game, 20 minutes should have been one major district of the map. That means the map is one quarter, or 25% of the size it needs to be. Then the next expansion of the game map we know exists because we've experienced it in the Star Stable seasonal games of winter, spring, and summer, also needs to be 20 minutes ride or 20 minutes north to south. Yet, we can't do that yet. The map we've got for the county we're in isn't complete. They haven't even opened the last part of the map we've got that they shoved into there because they added Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur and had to add an extra valley between Silver Glade and Pine Hills, aka Mystic Valley, that nobody knows what is in it at all, and it's a pretty big area of the map. It'd be as big as Silver Glade, or well, bigger than Dino Valley. We just know, well, 
No, we know nothing. They keep changing their minds about stuff. We heard a lot about Furfall before the Mistfall expansion, and then they decided not to include it. Players latch onto details like town names dropped during temporary and special events when you don't put in content regularly. They are searching and combing for anything to keep them going. So to change your mind constantly and decide not to do something is tantamount to game suicide. And they do this all the time, up to and including the main player story and the opening scroll of the game. That you can't replay unless you buy a new account at up to $75. I want to know why my player character is important and how we're going to defeat the ultimate evil of Garnock and what adventures in the other realms beyond Pandoria await us. Of course, they're changing that bit of the story too. The player is not special, not at all. I guess, I don't know, they can change it again. So I wouldn't hold my breath. I'm an author, I can do this myself. In fact, I have gone in and edited the first chapter of the story that is rescuing Justin, Lisa, and Anne to make it more emotionally impactful and make the player character the main character and, oh, yeah, make our actions in the game have consequences. I also developed what is in Mystic Valley and took out the parts of the game that annoyed me the most and moved some plot of the game to a later date, aka for the next chapter of the story. I glossed over a lot of side plots, actually moved some side plots along, and dev editor, author, there is so much potential in this game and the higher management of Star Stable Entertainment wants to squander it. Their game, their very company, is named after. If the company name changes, we are in major trouble. So, Star Stable, a game with no real competition in the open world MMO space due to its target demographic and lack of real game mechanics to make it challenging, is still somehow managing to screw the pooch. Screw the pooch so much that the players are mildly organizing to try and to do a premium currency strike in May and June. As enough of them have figured out, the only way to get the management's attention is to hit the pocketbooks. Some are worried it might cause layoffs. If the company goes that route, it's on the company, not the players. We are not responsible for employees losing their jobs because irresponsible higher management won't listen to the players about the content we want for our game we paid for. They did actions in choosing this heavy monetization and update roadmap. They chose to ignore the technology problems. It doesn't have to be this way. They can choose a different path. Us not buying premium currency is consequences. If they want us to support their game, they can change their ways in a 100% transparent fashion and fix the game and give us content, not cosmetics. Firing employees helps no one, especially when the employees are on the side, for the most part, of the players and really want to make SSO a good game. Now, the real issue with this is getting the YouTubers on board. Because there is no game content to make, let's play videos right now. YouTubers are dependent on scraping the filers for spoilers, fulfilling challenges set by their players, anything from glitching to buying everything in the game shop, shopping sprees to redo their player character and wardrobe, and buying the horses as soon as they come out. The YouTubers here are the whales, using this content to milk the algorithm to keep themselves famous. You can do fan art for free. You can do fan fiction for free. But in the game videos, they kind of rely on you either buying star coins, or doing something like training, or role playing with other players. You'd think it'd be easy enough to get them to do stuff inside the game that didn't involve paying for premium currency. But once again, Star Stables is releasing horses once a month. And the temptation to buy all the new horses right now in order to get that sweet, sweet YouTube algorithm bump may be too strong. The cognitive dissonance is deafening. Star Stable insists that a new horse model a month is what players want, despite the increasingly shrill cries otherwise. And their player base has shrunk to a 5% overall player base from allegedly 30 million players. And Active MMO has a 15 to 20% active player base. 
because Stacy Place did a poll and told them so? Let's add throwing the employees under the bus to this list. They go, management didn't decide this, an employee team decided this. Then Stacy takes credit, so it becomes, we asked Stacy to do a survey, essentially. Yeah, when was the last time you updated that survey? When was this survey? Who did she survey? Why are you listening to a survey not done by a professional? And why is the PR team not passing along what the comments are saying in a generalized report with your profit loss statement? What is your fancy CMO actually doing if she's not deciding on how often your cosmetic monetization is coming out? She can't be doing ads because, let's be clear, your ads in general are not good. There are players who are trying to encourage other players on social media to be constructive in their feedback to Star Stable. We need to tell them what we want. We need them to tell them how to make the updates out already better. Not call this game stupid, yell at the game devs slash PR people who aren't at fault. And I don't know, not point out they could actually give us more premium currency a week with their game allowance? This person blocked me. <sighs> okay then. This concept of constructive criticism is not actually the player base's job. The player base has no responsibility towards SSO to do anything other than buy the game base game and play it to the ground. It's not our job to tell them bugs. It's not our job to tell them ideas. It's not our job to fill out surveys. They are a game company who took on making a horse-oriented MMO. They should know how to make a horse-oriented MMO. And if they don't, there are marketing firms and research teams Quantric Foundry, and the Girls' Intelligence Agency, and good gravy Google! Like, most of Warcraft's development is out there somewhere online. The history of it, the other games, mechanics, and systems, they're out there to be researched and checked to see if they could be used in SSO. They should be doing this as a matter of survival. If Red Dead Redemption 2 has horse mechanics, they should have someone who works for the game, playing the game, and making a report. If Black Desert Online has horse mechanics, play the game, make a report. They aren't paying us to tell them anything because we are not beta testers. Hey, they aren't paying their ambassadors that they sometimes use as beta testers. Big game companies, responsible game companies, pay their beta testers. Ambassadors shouldn't have to be reporting bugs to the game devs to get them actually fixed. The ambassadors shouldn't be peer pressured by players to try and moderate chat in the game chat or advertise player created events like conventions out of the game. That is not their job. They are already being the free PR mouthpiece of SSO and often doing it on their own time fan content. So it's not their job to be making surveys either. Yet. They are. SSO ambassadors, please stop giving this game your free labor. You can't afford it. Signed, you can't eat exposure and most people aren't going to care for original content unless it's somehow horse related. Truism. People who engage in fandom content are highly, highly unlikely to make that transition to engaging in consuming your original IP content unless it's very closely related or an AU with serial numbers filed off type of content aka Fifty Shades of Grey. And even then, she's a fluke of marketing and being a marketer doing a fanfic of a fanfic of a fanfic. If this free labor starts interfering with your regular life, stop doing it. The thing about the constructive criticism, the players have been saying things since the beginning, and in the beginning the company listened. The game devs cared and were engaged, and it had higher management that supported them. This changed in 2016, 2017, and by 2018 the players started calling for more content and less horses, and the management no longer wanted to hear it. They won't listen. It's 2021, and this hasn't changed. What has changed is the perception of the company by the player base. Star Stable is being considered patronizing by not listening to their players for years, and greedy. And being greedy is an extremely difficult label to shed. Even at the most generous, you buy premium currency only on double weekends. If you wanted all the horse from the game they put out in 2020, they are asking you to put in $390 of real world money into their game for that year. Two children. Teenagers. 
and they haven't put out real story related content since the spring of 2019. So it's the spring of 2021 and they're finally promising some story quest. If they are more than five minutes long, I mean game quests that take a couple days to do, like three or four hours of quests, they may have bought themselves some time until November. However, November needs to see a massive, and I mean hundreds, if not a thousand game quests, even if they are fetch quests, progressing a plot, any plot, of all the plots dangling in this tiny map, for their longtime players not to ditch them entirely. There may not be any other open world MMO horse games out there right now. This is only a matter of time. There are others in the works, and in the meantime, they can play Red Dead Redemption 2, Rival Stars Horse Racing, Alicia Online, and Zelda Breath of the Wild, and about any other game that includes horses up to and including Assassin's Creed, or go out and try Black Desert Online for a mere $10 for the basic game, which includes a free horse. And by the way, they already are. They are playing SSO less and less and not logging in at all. Star Stable's most obvious problem in how not to make a long-term MO game is fairly obvious. They have a bad game technology they need to upgrade, and the company needs some massive team reorganization to be more efficient and match standards, and management has changed from a long-term profit model with balanced monetization to a short-term profit model without any real content being put into the game on a regular basis for the last two years, which is as long as you get with MMO attention spans. Their story update schedule kills emotional pacing and tension, and thus player investment. And their public relations is bad, and going into the toilet as they dig their own grave. The real problem we've been skirting around it, because I wanted you to understand the insanity of what is going on with the game. How did we get to this point? If they wanted to do a 10-12 to 12 step plan of Star Stable Remastered, which is apparently long overdue, I have one. The obvious problems are fixable with enough money and people. Money is seemingly not a problem since they're making a profit, enough to increase their employee base by 40%, and enough to start another game. And people, well, um, they might have to eat some crow on that one if the game devs don't already have other jobs. Plus, hire a bunch of people. Like an actual translation team? Okay, my lovelies, I'm going to end the video here for now. Mostly for the sake of my voice and for the sake of time. No one wants to watch, listen to me yammer for over an hour. Next time, we are going to go into the real problem of this game. See you in the next video, my lovelies.